All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, today we got uh, a couple of great comments here. Um, the first one by Dean J. Johnston, 3153. He says, what has this to do with the kingdom of heaven now? Luke 4, verse 18, Isaiah 61, Acts 2, verse 4, I'm assuming. I, I don't know. Your babbling is nothing but Babylon. All right, and this is in reference to the video where I explain there is no third temple that's going to be built. That's not in the Bible. But let's address this comment here, and this is a great opportunity, a great learning opportunity. Now, this reminded me of a comment that I got the other day from Wedden 1051919 he could have said um, in his comment here he says I know that in Daniel 9 it's talking about Jesus causing the sacrifice to cease when I read Daniel chapter 8 it sounds like it's saying the Antichrist takes the sacrifice away what are these verses saying well he could have said your babbling is nothing but Babylon and are you smoking crack and you know he could have been um, not nice about it but he was very nice and so Dean J Johnson or D Dean Johnson excuse me he's got a different approach and that's okay too so we're gonna address this question that he has and hopefully it's a learning opportunity for him and for me and for anybody that might be viewing this video okay now we'll go to Luke 8 or Luke 4 verse 18 just to go over the verses to get an idea where he's coming from in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 it says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has a point he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and set at liberty them that are bruised and then Isaiah 61 It says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And then again, in I'm guessing here, Luke, or I'm sorry, Acts, Acts chapter 2, verse 4. It could be chapters two through four. I'm not going to read three chapters for you to try to help uh, understand whatever question he has. But and they will all filled, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All right, this is in regards to the cloven tongues. So it's interesting here. Um, speaking of the Spirit of the Lord to preach and again in Luke it says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and he anointed me to preach the gospel and so we there's numerous verses that uh, tell us to go and preach the gospel to every creature right we are a kingdom of priests alright so the kingdom of this world is not the kingdom of God our kingdom is not of this world our kingdom is above just like I've pointed out uh, numerous times that Jerusalem is not in the Middle East Jerusalem is above right and we are a holy nation unto God and so let me show you a couple of verses here um, in the Old Testament. Uh, 
that might help understand a little bit. Let's go. Let's go this route here. All right. Let's go to Psalm. Let's see. Let's go to Psalm. 45 thy throne O God is forever and ever the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter All right, and then I think uh, in Daniel probably explains it maybe as well as anything um, in my mind I guess because uh, let me read it first in Daniel chapter 2 verse 44 and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever now in the context of this uh, Daniel talks about four beasts which are four kings which are four kingdoms that'll be upon the earth and then the end will come he also talks about a fifth kingdom which shall never be destroyed and that's what he's referring to here the fifth kingdom which is the kingdom of God shall destroy all the kingdoms of earth all right and that will be finalized upon the return of our Lord Jesus Christ all right yeah, pretty simple stuff and pretty amazing now you think of John chapter 3 and Jesus says verily verily I say unto thee unless a man is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God right? and the kingdom of God is above this world is not the kingdom of God. This world is coming to an end. All right, so let's go. Let's go to the book of John, uh, chapter 18. Jesus says, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews? But now is my kingdom not from hence. All right, so very clearly, as we read all throughout the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, there is the kingdom of God to come, right? which is a kingdom where there is no sorrow, no crying, no death, no pain, there is no sin at all. All the wickedness and evilness of this world will be destroyed and the last kingdom will be established forever that's what we're putting our hope in eternal life All right, it, it's pretty simple stuff but when you got so many false teachers out there you know the message gets very uh, confused alright so hopefully that explains a little bit here um, there's the this world is not the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of heaven is is um, upon us no question about it but the kingdom of heaven is above the throne of God is above this world is not the kingdom of heaven there shouldn't be any doubt about it now <clears throat> it's important um, number one to have faith in the Word of God to believe that the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God that's extremely important okay and without that faith then the, the, you're not gonna have that understanding it's really that simple okay so let's go to this comment real quick here uh, YouTube studio sucks 978 says so you believe that your God sacrificed himself to himself so that he could save you from himself are you smoking crack <clears throat> okay so that's not I've never made that statement 
All right, so we're, we're not trying to be saved from God. We're trying to be saved from death. All right. Now, it's true that God was manifest in the flesh. All right. <clears throat> So, I mean, that's very clear. That should be very clear who Jesus is. Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. We read that specifically in 1 Timothy chapter 3. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory now we also can go to um, Isaiah 7 I forget what it says here therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel and then, of course, in Matthew chapter 1, we read the same thing, where it says, um, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So Jesus is God with us. When he was born of the virgin, <clears throat> he was manifest into the flesh. That was God manifest in the flesh. So, Jesus has destroyed this body, this temple that we're in, and rebuilt it back up. That was the whole point of the third temple video. All right. So, he has led the way for us. Right. He is the way. God has led us away just as Moses led his people out of Egypt. So also does Jesus lead us out of this wicked world. All right. And so he has led the way. So he came into the flesh just as we are in this body. He also was in this body. And then he laid down his life. It, and as I explained in the Antichrist video, that the Romans killed Jesus. It was, but it was actually the Jews that had the Romans kill him. But uh, the reality is, Jesus laid down his life. He let them. He allowed them to kill him. So Jesus became the perfect sacrifice. For the sins of the whole world. Just like what we read in um, is it Hebrews 10. Um, um, or is it Hebrews 4? I don't know. I can't remember. Uh -oh, hold on a second. Let's see if we can find it. Hebrews 10. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. But this is... This goes back to when Abraham was going to offer his son Isaac to be a sacrifice for sins and then the angel stopped him. And so now God has offered his son to be that perfect sacrifice. And just like what we read, it's not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. But our Lord Jesus Christ has laid down his life, and it's his blood that takes away sins. Alright, so I, it seems pretty simple um, for those of us that believe, those of us that are born of the Spirit of God, but for those that are not born of the Spirit of God, those that do not believe, it can be very difficult uh, to understand that very difficult but what should be pretty clear I think for an unbeliever is that when you look at the law of God and the law of Moses you ought to know that you cannot live up to those standards that you fall short of those standards 
that Moses has laid down for us. Should be no question about it. Um, be, not because of, not just because of your actions, but because of your heart. And you ought to know you need a change in your life. And you can't do it on your own. That's really what it comes down to. You can't save yourself. I mean, think about it. What are you going to do to save yourself? Because it is appointed unto man once to die, and then after this, judgment. You know it. You were built to know it. You can deny it all the days of your life, but it's still going to happen. So, so begs the question, how are you going to save yourself? I mean, you might be a young man now and think you're made of steel, but the day is coming when your body will break down, you'll become an old man, and death will loom closer and closer. And therefore, you're, it's going to be inevitable. If it's going to be inevitable when you're an old man, then it should be inevitable to you as a young man also. The day's coming. But you're going to die. You can't get around it. So therefore, how are you going to escape the damnation of hell? And it should be pretty obvious just by just by knowing a little bit of the law of Moses it really should be because in your heart you know that you can't live up to that standard you need a savior now of course the good news is we have a savior it's the Lord Jesus Christ he was he is God and he was manifest in the flesh and he has led the way for us. He has died. He has destroyed this body that we're in. And he has raised it back up from the dead. And rebuilt this body that we're in. He has rebuilt it to a better body. A more holy temple. A perfect temple. And that's what we read about here. In regards to the temple or the destruction of, you know, the, the temple, the sanctuary, whatever you want to call it, in the book of Daniel. See, there is no going to be another Herod's temple. That's not in the Bible at all. In John, it made it very clear that, what is it, John 2? When the Jews they didn't understand because they said in 46 years we've been building this thing Wait, you're gonna destroy it and build it back up in three days but Jesus was talking about his the body his body which is the body that we're in now this body is a temple of God and Jesus destroyed this temple and then built it back up in three days. A perfect temple. And this is what this is talking about. It's not a building of stone and brick and mortar and that sort of stuff. It's the temple. Our body is a temple. Know ye not. That ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? <clears throat> which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Okay, so it should be very clear, really, that there is no third temple that's going to be built. Jesus has already destroyed the temple. All right. and this is not talking about uh, Herod's temple, as the Jews thought it was talking about. It's talking about 
the body. And Jesus destroyed this body. And he raised it back up from the dead. And he ascended to heaven and he has promised to return for us that are born of God. All right, so to circle back around to Dean Johnson. Right now, those of us that are born of God are born of the Spirit of God. <clears throat> okay, so we go to John chapter 3. And Jesus says, <clears throat> excuse me, you must be born again. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. And so that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So everybody is born of the flesh. But not everybody is born of the Spirit, which is above. Right? You think of Jerusalem. Our holy city is above. The kingdom of heaven is above. Our God is above. We are not of this world. We are strangers in a strange land. And believe me, this world is strange. It's getting more strange every day. We that are born of the Spirit are born from above. And so the kingdom of God is upon us right now. Upon us that are born of the Spirit of God. But this world is not of the kingdom of God. Remember, I mean, you can't. This is. It's amazing stuff. You can't deny the scripture. Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world, right? If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews? But now is my kingdom not from hence. We are the nation of God. We are a nation of priests. We are a kingdom of priests. So when Jesus says... Um, that his kingdom is not of this world um, he's laying down his life for all of us alright so the Jews captured him handed him off to the Romans to have him killed Jesus could have prevented all of that but he didn't because he was he knew what his mission was and that was to lay down his life for the sins of the whole world and to destroy this temple that we're in that he was in and then build it back up in three days and he built this temple back up a temple that is perfect and pure without sin and that's what we're putting our hope into is a perfect temple a holy temple a sinless temple and Jesus ascended to heaven and has promised to return for us. And when he comes in the clouds of heaven, then those of us that are born of God will be lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. And those that are not born of God will be gathered at our feet and they will be destroyed forever. Okay. And that goes back to Genesis 3 verse 15. I will put, when the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. It's a fulfillment. It's the end of the world. Alright, so that's what the third temple is about. Alright, and that's, that's um, directly connected to the kingdom of heaven. Because the kingdom of heaven is above. The kingdoms of this world are not from above. And just like what we read there in Daniel chapter 2. Let's see if I can get to it here. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. And this is the kingdom that we're in that are born of the Spirit of God which is from above and in those days of the of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people 
It's an everlasting kingdom. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. So the kingdom of heaven is going to break in pieces and consume all the kingdoms of this world. So you get it, right? There's a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdoms of this world. This world's coming to an end. I don't care if you're a believer or non-believer. You know in your heart this world cannot sustain itself. This world will come to an end. And so again, so begs the question. How can you escape the damnation of hell?